Minnesota, the Cowboys, they're continuing training camp while stars Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, and Micah Parsons still looking for new deals. Danny Boy with another hot take yesterday. Here he is. Here's the truth about the Cowboys. They're content on mediocrity. They'd rather be relevant than remembered. The Cowboys, who are the most valued organization in all of North American sports, are the cheapest organization, as of now, in all of North American sports. They're not going to win without C.D. Lamb. They can talk about the contract offers and whatnot. Without C.D. Lamb, this team has absolutely no shot. All right, Lou, you're up first. What do you make of what Dan had to say? Well, Dan's not wrong as far as them being one of the cheapest teams. I don't know about North American sports. I haven't looked at every, you know, single franchise across all the other different, you know, disciplines. But I can say this, over the past three years, in terms of the amount of cash that they have paid out, they're in the bottom. They're right at the bottom of the NFL, which was surprising to me. Cash commitments to their players over the past three years, it was surprising to me to see them fall, to be that far down. See, people get hung up on the cap. I can just tell you, the cap is just an accounting mechanism that can be manipulated. Internally, what people worry about is how much cash are we giving to our players? Because cash is king to owners. Cash is king to everybody. And the Dallas Cowboys aren't giving out a whole lot of it over the past three years. So he's right about that. He's right about that. As far as CD is concerned, and like, what, should, this, should this be a contract that's already done? Yeah, I believe it should be done. I really do. Is there an argument that Dallas can make to say that, look, you are not deserving of eclipsing Justin Jefferson? Of course. The statistics would bear that out. Is there an argument, though, for CD to say, without me, we have no passing game? Just look at how much I am responsible for as far as receiving yardage and explosive playmaking on the perimeter. Of course he does. And I'm sure that's where the divide is. He probably, CD probably equates that to saying, hey, look, these quarterbacks, they don't, they're not necessarily, not all of them are necessarily the very best quarterbacks in the NFL when it comes to their time to get a new contract, but they get paid like one. It's my turn. I should be paid similar to what Justin Jefferson's being paid. And, and the Dallas Cowboys are saying, no, that's not how we see it. But he should be the priority. Dak, Dak you know, in this, in this particular situation, Dak really can't be the priority. And I'll tell you why. Because they're doing this on Dak's timeline. Dak ain't doing this on their timeline. Dak will let them know when he's ready to sign or not. Because he's getting his regardless. Either it's from Dallas or it's from someone else next year. And people can hate it all they want, but you better learn to accept it. Just like Ric Flair says, he is going to get his, and it's going to be huge. That's why they need to focus in on CD, get him done, turn their attention to Micah, get him done, and move on. Well, it's, it's hard for me to say that they, they're a cheap organization. I, I, I don't know if anybody's ever said that Jerry Jones has been cheap. What they have been is very fortunate that they drafted very well. Right? We didn't see Bland coming, but we know that he's in line now to be paid if he continues the trajectory that he had. They paid Diggs. They did a great thing. Like, they drafted Michael Parsons. Nobody, we knew Michael Parsons was going to be good. We didn't know he was going to be generational. Right? They, they, they paid Demarcus Lawrence. They paid Zach Martin a couple of times. They've always paid Tyron Smith. The issue is they had a young core, so they didn't have to address and spend money. Now, now the credit card bill is due. And now this young talent has ascended. And now, yesterday, today's price is not yesterday's price. And that's what they have to realize. And I think the C.D. Lamb thing is going to get done because he's a guy that's going to be there regardless. Like, I'm probably about 70, 30 uh, of, of if Dak is going to be there because I think he's going to have a decision. He may not want to continue to put up with the scrutiny and criticism that he continues is under, even when he plays high underneath the lights of Dallas and might see, hey, look at all these good players, Drew Brees, guys that have left where they started from and finished. Not everybody, most, most quarterbacks don't finish where they started. Matthew Stafford, they go other places where they're greatly appreciated and the core is ready to win. But I agree with Jerry Jones in putting some pressure and applying some pressure because we know what, the, what, the, what the, the narrative is about the Dallas Cowboys. They walk around like they're the 95 team. They walk around with this bravado that they, don't, they haven't earned because of what they used to be. And so now Jerry's saying, hey, man, put up a, show, uh, put up a shut up. Because if we don't win, why would I give $60 million to Dak Prescott knowing that it's going to cost me Zach Martin and Demarcus Lawrence and expect to be able to win next year with a less talented team? I'm with Bart 100%. This, this idea that somehow the, the Dak Prescott is Roger Staubach and he's going to have a pick of teams. Most good teams have good quarterbacks. 
So where's he going to go? Play for a lousy team? And he's not proved. Let him play for his supper. He hasn't. What has he proved exactly? He folds in postseason games. Let's be honest. Did we not see the Green Bay game? Did we not see San Francisco three years ago when he didn't know the rule and didn't hand the ball to the official when they couldn't get a game-tying field goal off? He was outplayed by Purdy in the championship game a couple of years ago. This idea that somehow the Cowboys are not being fair to Dak Prescott. He's making $55 million, and he's not, he's not even a top-10 quarterback. Lamb, they're going to pay Lamb. It's mm-hmm. six weeks to go before week one. Does anybody think that CeeDee Lamb is not going to be on the field when they play the Browns with Brady in the booth in week one? Mm-hmm. Of course he's going to play. And he'll pay Parsons eventually. Yeah. I mean, geez, he wants to win. He's 82 years of age. The man wants to win. This is ridiculous that somehow, some way, on July 31st, I got to break down the contract issues of <laughs> Lamb and Parsons and Prescott. I don't care about Prescott. He hasn't won anything. You're crazy. Oh, you're a hard. Dak you're Prescott. Crazy. What are you doing? If this? you don't think Dak Prescott the, is going to get doggy. other offers, he has the leverage. Well, what team? What, well, what, what good team? Well, he'll get he'll get one it from the not. Giants. He'll get one potentially from the Raiders. Any team doggy. that needs a quarterback. Yeah, the Raiders. Let him go. Or the Raiders. Any, they never or win. Or any team doggy. that's a quarterback away from winning. Go to football. He goes Lewis, to the Giants. Go ahead, Lewis. Doggy. Dougie, who threw all those passes then? Who was that guy in jersey number four who was like the number one quarterback in QBR, completion percentage above expected, over expected this year? Who threw those passes? Was that not Dak? Uh, Lewis. It was him. When you get by paid many, six, ab- by many, many objective measures. I know what I know what you're I know what you're gonna say. I'm I know what on. you're gonna say. I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, but you're gonna say in the postseason he hasn't won. You're gonna say in the postseason he hasn't gotten it done. Dak didn't play linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys against the Green Bay Packers. And I understand what you're talking about in terms of the clock management situation at the end of the game two years ago against San Fran. Dak is kind of like Tua in the AFC. It doesn't matter what he does. We're sitting there going, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but with him. Tua, same way. Well, yeah, but he didn't do that. Yeah, but he didn't, but he didn't do that. The greatest team game in the world, and we constantly, with these two, hold them to responsible for every single thing. It's like Dak lost that game or Dak won that game. No, I, actually, it's more like this. Dak lost the game. When they win the game, the Cowboys won the game. This, this is what we do. We apply like this weird criteria to this guy, and I understand that he needs to go ahead and elevate his play postseason-wise. But I think we kind of like, we, we, we moved the goalpost with him a little bit too because he has been fantastic. Fantastic during the regular season, and I know it's a postseason league. Trust me, I get that. But there's no way that you can say, based off of his performances over the past three years, that he doesn't deserve to be considered a guy who's a top 10 quarterback. Yeah, he deserves his money. I just think Jerry Jones is saying, hey, maybe you want to leave something on the table. You, you think about what happened with Patrick Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes saying he's, not, he's not underpaid. You know, it's like, okay, if we're going to pay you this, Dak, we need results. Because what happens is you, you have to be able to elevate guys that aren't good. Now, we gave you a good roster. When we remember Dak Prescott starting to become elite, it's when they had to trade for Amari Cooper, right? And Amari Cooper kind of helped him develop. No different than Josh Allen. No different than what you yeah. know, uh, Tyreek Hill was to, to Patrick Mahomes. But at some point, you're going to start losing players. You're going to start losing. We can't give you the best uh, roster. That's why it's going to be interesting to see what the San Francisco's decide to do with Brock Purdy. Because it seems like we've been saying he's part of the system. But what happens when now you lose Trent Williams? What happens when you lose baby Brandon Ayuk? Are you that same elite guy? 100%. He's a system quarterback, Purdy. I'm not sure about him necessarily. Lewis, listen. The NFL, when you're getting paid $55 million and your quarterback in the Dallas Cowboys, you can't be two and six in the playoffs. That's it. Simple as that. You want to get $60 million? Get me to, get me to a couple Super Bowls. That's what it's about. Or play well in games you lose in the postseason, like Josh Allen, who has been not good, well, great against Mahomes in two playoff losses. Not good, great. Name me the playoff game outside of maybe beating doggy, eight, doggy, nine doggy, Tampa. Doggy. He's not been great. Doggy, how many? So Super many Bowls? other guys get paid and haven't thought, been does, great. Does, I'm not saying that. We just saw Trevor Lawrence get paid. We just saw Jordan ridiculous. Love get paid. And that's the problem with the NFL. <laughs> but that, but that's, that's the problem the business. With, it's next up. Well, if you like want a quarterback, you have to pay him. I, listen, I think we all Saturday agree. We, we all we all agree that Dak, Pres- that Dak Prescott is going to get paid his money. What we're arguing about is the difference between you know being the highest paid, where you limit the organization from being able to go get talent to support him, 
because it's only a couple of quarterbacks that are 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 that type of good. I get it, but they're all Tua just got paid. I know we're gonna get into it. They're yeah, all getting paid. But Tua got the paid only... fifty two million dollars. He left a lot of money on the table so that they could be able to, to redo Tyreek Hill's deal. That's what we're talking about. It's the difference between the annual five, you know, three to five million dollars. Those three to five million dollars over a course of five years allows you to address certain issues to keep other people. Because like I said, when once Dak Prescott gets paid. That means that Zach Martin, who's already disgruntled, they tried to put a, a, a Band-Aid on his deal last year, and Demarcus Lawrence is gone. So now you don't have as good of a team. That's all I'm saying. And I agree. Take a little less on the table. I don't but like who the else idea. Maybe 58. Maybe 58. Tom Brady. Well, well, I guess Patrick, well, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. A little bit Patrick now. Mahomes. Yeah. Mahomes, yeah. Mahomes, yeah. And Tua. Yeah. That is the problem with the NFL. And Jared Goff. Quarterbacks no, no. get paid before they earn it because it's not about their play. It's well, about the timing. But that's and that's you gotta the problem. talk to Roger Goodell about that then. That's the problem. Lewis, I'll give you the final word. It's the hardest position to play in all of sports. There is a supply shortage at the position. Okay, it's vacant, it's basic economics. It's not like see here here's the thing. It sounds right, easy man. to go, hey, you know what? I'm not paying that guy. And you know what? Just let him go. We'll just We'll just reset the clock, and we'll draft another one, and we'll just start over and build everything <laughs> around them. It doesn't work like yeah. that, and that's what these teams know. And sometimes, like I'm telling you, what is Dallas's next best alternative outside of Dak? Well, they, unless, they okay, start. unless you're willing to adjust your expectations, you're going to have to adjust your expectations then. If you're going to let him walk, you may go years and not have another guy. And you may have a lot of nice pieces – but you got a guy back there who can't pull the trigger. You ain't going anywhere. Well, That's gotta, why the market has become what it's become. You got to think of their history, though. They went from Tony Romo to Dak Prescott. And, you know, when you look in Green Bay, it's worked out for them. Yeah, Green Bay's the rare one that, that hit three times.